Hello all, Shoestring here. We're at the local Walmart. We are going to begin our spices haul and we're gonna go inside and see what they have. So here we are at the $1 spices at the Walmart. And we are working on a shoestring, so the most inexpensive we're gonna get. We're gonna go through the basics, what most people use, and then we're going to get back to the house and go through each one and see what we have. So this will take a little bit. But what, remember, these are spices that get put back because it's important that not only that you're eating, but that your food tastes good. Bland food gets boring real fast. And the point of the spice is to avoid that. We got 10 spices and flavorings while we were at the Walmart today. This is an important but often overlooked part of food storage. Spices and flavorings can take a meal preparation in entirely different levels. The difference between bland and boring, and a family meal that everyone can enjoy. So let's look at what Miss Shoestring got. First, let's not forget to store up some salt and pepper. We didn't get any in today's haul because we already have plenty put back. But if you're just starting spices, you want to be sure you buy the salt and pepper. Because that's extremely important. So, let's get started. Ground cloves. Mrs. Shoestring uses this. Right there, so you can get a good look at it. Miss Shoestring uses this in her spice cupcakes. So I'm pleased to know that I will be continuing to get those. Even when things go poorly. Then there's chili powder best known for adding zing to a pot of chili. You can use it for other things, but that's one of the main uses. Then paprika. Had to practice saying that a couple times, paprika. This spice is actually related to chili powder, but calmer and not so much zing. Turmeric is next. This is one of the primary flavors in curry powder, and we do like that. But she says she uses it in a whole lot more other dishes than just that and recommends that everyone else should be adding this healthy spice to all sorts of dishes. Then there's parsley. Goes in a lot of things from casseroles to salads. Then sage. Useful in tomatoes, potatoes, bean dishes. It's also used in flavoring different meats. But I'm not sure how much meat they're going to be around during the time of troubles. Cumin's next. Miss Shoestring doesn't use a lot of this spice and wishes she could have got a smaller jar at the store, but that was all they had. Minced onion. If you have a jar of dry onion bits, it will store longer than fresh onions, and there will be no tears when it comes time to add onions to whatever you're cooking. Then garlic. Around here we, uh, we like to use lots of garlic in cooking, so I guess there aren't going to be any vampires in with the zombie apocalypse. The zombies will be bad enough. Then the bouillon. Now this is not really a spice and doesn't appear on the, on the spice rack. But here, it is here because it makes a great deal of difference to flavoring things like chicken noodle soup and many other dishes. Now these are not all the spices we use. However, this will be a great start toward tastier dinners if we need to pull this box out. Some of them were in the were $1 bottles. Some of them were much more. But as long as we keep getting a few each time we go shopping, then we can enjoy a full spice rack when the store shelves are empty. And just remember, there's a wheat crop failure already happening in different parts of the country. So a new wave of food shortages is likely to be headed to a grocery store near you very soon. The only thing we can do is get started. Start saving a little each time you shop. Just remember, food will get you through times of no money, better than money will get you through times of no food. You can't eat money. So if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe and like, and put something down in the comments. I get a lot of suggestions on videos to make, things people want to know by the comments below. Shoestring out.